So I think I think most of you guys probably saw the statement that went out um, during practice from from Landon Tangwell and his family. Uh, I had a really good meeting with Landon and his uh, dad uh, earlier in the week. Um, I'd ask all you guys to be as respectful as you possibly can um, of him and his process and his family. As you know, I'm not going to get into the specifics of it, um, you know. But I, I think you'll be seeing Landon around here. Um, you know, hopefully pretty soon. Um, but we just talked about it as a team as well. And, um, you know, we're just going to be as supportive as we possibly can. This is a hard thing, obviously. Uh, you can imagine he's been playing football his entire life. Um, so I'd ask the Penn State community and I would ask uh, the media um, to be as respectful of their process as possible. So open up to questions. James, he's been a young leader for, for you guys, been committed forever. What's it going to mean to still have him close to the program, uh, you know, serving in those roles? Yeah, we're, just, we're not really at that stage yet. I'm confident that he will. Um, as you can imagine, this is a major life change. So, you know, take some time. Um, and then I think you'll see him, whether it's coaching or whether it's recruiting or whether it's strength and conditioning. Um, at the end of the day, he, he's a part of our family, always has been, always will be. That will never change uh, based on the circumstances. How do you think we'll be trying to replace him? Yeah, guys, you know, I, I, I really, I kind of made my statement on this. I'd like to kind of move on to the next, the next topics about West Virginia and anything else that you guys have interest in. Again, I'm just trying to be respectful of Landon and his family. James, James you uh, haven't opened at home. Dad. Sorry, go ahead. No, go, go okay. ahead. Uh, just to follow up on that a bit in a different way, uh, Vega, Ioane, and then Anthony Donka seem like maybe they're going to be depth pieces or more than that. Can you talk about their role at, at those interior spots? Yeah, so, you know, the, the, you know, the one thing I would say is we've been getting those guys reps now, um, you know, for, for a while, uh, at least at least over a week. Uh, Venga has showed some really positive sides and some flashes. Anthony Donka has come in probably further ahead than we anticipated. Um, you know, he's an example of a guy that committed to Penn State. We encouraged him to come every single camp, and he did. I think him and his family drove three to four hours up to six camps and worked with Coach Troutwine, just got around the program, and he came in really advanced. Um, so we're proud of him, and he's doing a nice job. But obviously, those guys and their development was always important, but it just, it just got magnified. James, you haven't opened at home in a couple of years. Is it nice to be here coming off of fall camp, not having to travel right out the bat? And does that make a difference for players? Yeah, I think it, it you know, obviously helps. There's a lot of excitement uh, around the around the program. We had a quarterback lunch, uh, quarterback club luncheon today. Um, it was record numbers. It was packed. It was great environment and energy in there. I think it'll be like that Saturday night as well. Um, I think for us, you know, we're gonna we're gonna play whoever is on our schedule. We're gonna play wherever the games are at. But yeah, I think there's there's some there's some excitement about opening up here at home, especially prime time, 7:30 at night. Uh, should be a great environment against a regional opponent. And I think I think our, our players and our staff are excited about the opportunity. How have your uh, special teams battles progressed since we last talked about it last week? As you get closer to the game. Yeah, it's been good. I think, you know, going out um, and getting some veteran guys to come in here and compete uh, with our current guys, I think that's been a real positive. Uh, you know, whether those guys end up being the starters uh, from, you know, inside the program, the internal guys or the guys that came in from outside, you know, uh, I'm not sure yet. Um, but I think it's, it's really elevated the whole group. You know, we tried as much as we can to create as much competition with the specialists, no different than any other position. It doesn't happen a lot of times, whether it's kicks in practice, um, putting pressure on those guys, uh, whether it's making sure you have the depth and talent uh, to create a, a truly competitive environment. Uh, we, we found a way to do it, and I think it's been, I think it's been you know, important you know, for our development at that position and our chance to not only build on what we did last year, but hopefully take it to a different level. James, you've had teams that everybody knew they were going to be good. You've had teams that maybe you could see some of the bumps in the road coming. This seems like a team that could be really good if. How do you deal with the, the if of development, the if of 
you know, positional guys stepping up, that sort of middle ground where you can see some pieces, but you're still waiting to find those other ones. Yeah, again, I think a lot of times it's just very different for us because we really approach it the same way every single year. Every team in the country has strengths, and every team in the country has some um, areas that maybe you don't have the depth uh, that you need at the time or have some deficiencies and need to play a certain style uh, to disguise some of those deficiencies early on. I mean, no one's got the perfect team or the perfect roster, so we're approaching it the same way that we always do. One of the things I think has been very different in this camp is a lot of times it's difficult to develop the threes because you may have a third group somewhere that doesn't have the depth. So it impacts the development of all the other groups. Uh, us being able in college football to bring 120 in the camp over 110, I thought had a significant impact in that. Um, I thought that made a lot of sense. I think there's a lot of conversation about going to whatever your whatever your normal roster number is. It doesn't really make sense in today's college football where the guys are here all summer anyway. It doesn't make sense to not include everybody in camp. So I'm hopeful that that will change. Um, but I think for us, Ben, it's not like the stuff that's being talked about. Obviously, we're aware of it. But we our approach is the same every single year. Coach, what does Don Bazooka mean to your to your program and this team? Your beard game is strong. Thank you. <laughs> um, I think Dom's just a really good example. I had a young man in my office today that is talented, but is not maximizing his opportunity right now. Should have a more significant role. I think Dom's a great example of that. Dom. I mean, you think about his story, was the Pennsylvania State Player of the Year, tore his ACL, played the state championship game in the ACL, stayed home in the fall to rehab, went to community college, came here in the spring, um, you know, has, has been on the scout team, has earned a scholarship, is now a captain. Uh, he's just a great example. Every single day in the meeting rooms, every single day in winter workouts, every single day in the weight room or practice, it's like the Super Bowl for him. And he's very appreciative of being at Penn State. He's very prideful. He's a very prideful young man. Um, I think his mom and dad and community did a really good job of raising him. Uh, but I think he's a really good example of somebody that's coming to Penn State and maximizing this experience both academically and athletically. Uh, and I think he's a guy that has really universally earned everybody's respect uh, throughout the program, coaches and players alike. James, Jesus, how much has the development of defensive tackle strengthened what's already a pretty good defense? Yeah, I think it helps because I thought we were pretty good last year at D tackle, but we're bigger right now and we're deeper. Um, and that's going to be important. Those are physical positions. You're going to have bumps and bruises. Um, all those guys need to be preparing like they're the starters. Um, but we have more depth than we've had in the past, um, specifically at D-Town. Adisa Isaac's a guy who I think entering this season is probably the healthiest he's been up to start a year in a while. Um, how have you kind of seen him progress through that adversity? And where would you kind of pinpoint where he is right now? Yeah, I think like for most of us, right, the adversity at the time is hard. Um, it is. But I think Adisa is the player and the person he is today for going through it. And I think that's kind of a valuable lesson that we all learn over time with age and, and wisdom that all these battles and all these, you know, adversities and challenges that may come at you, you know, a lot of times they're blessings, right? They, they force you to grow in ways that you normally wouldn't grow. And Adis is just in a really good place. He's in a great place academically. He's in a great place athletically from a leadership standpoint. He's just, I think you guys have gotten to know him. He's an impressive, impressive young man. Uh, his family situation, uh, how his mom has raised him, his brothers and sisters. He's just a phenomenal young man. Uh, I would, I'd hire, you know, Adisa. Um, you know, I got no j problem pounding the table with NFL teams uh, for Adisa. If Tony Misitano is back there. I would have no problem pounding the table for Tony to hire him. And to me, that's kind of our, our goal and our objective, right, is to, 
develop these guys as football players, but also develop these guys as young men that you're comfortable um, putting your name on them, um, you know, whether it's in football or outside of football. James, uh, you, Mark Sagan talked a lot about last week, trying to find consistency at wide receiver. How comfortable comfortable are you with the consistency in the room, and how many guys do you expect to rotate on Saturday? Yeah, I think we're more consistent than we've been in the past. Um, I think you'll see two guys, Trey and Dre, uh, play in more of starter-type roles that, that tap. Uh, and then you'll see that other position be more of a rotation. Um, and I also think you'll see some position flexibility for us to get that third guy on the field. We feel like we have the ability to move Dre and Trey around, which is which is important to get those other guys on the field. But it also makes it difficult for West Virginia and our opponents to say, okay, well, Dre's always going to be at the X and Trey's always going to be at the Z. There's power in that, being able to move guys around as well so they can't focus on a position uh, in the game plan and trying to eliminate them. James, what do you hope to learn about Drew Saturday night? Well, obviously, you're going to learn a lot. I mean, he's played, so we've, we we kind of have an understanding of that, but there's difference being the starter and, and playing starter-type reps. So, you know, obviously, you know, at the end of the day, um, you know, I want him to continue to play like he did last year with poise um, and really kind of a really good understanding of how to manage the game. I also want him to let the plays come to him because with our running game um, and with the weapons that we have at tight end and, and at wide receiver, uh, he doesn't need to force anything. He doesn't have to feel like he's got too much on his shoulders between our defense, our special teams, our running game. Um, I feel like we can go out there and just call the game the way we want to call it. But I, I, I want him to, to feel like, hey, I got enough weapons around me. I just got to manage the game and allow my experience and confidence to grow as the season goes on.